So I'm a firm believer that every modified car should have a basic set of gauges to tell them things about the overall health of their engine as they're using it, such as oil pressure and air fuel ratio. Those are gonna be two of the biggest gauges that you should have in your car to ensure that your engine has a proper and healthy life. Because if something's gonna go wrong, those gauges will give you a heads up or a pre warning that something's about to blow up or go extremely wrong. So what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be installing these gauges into our 2007 SCI here. So let me walk through it. I don't have too much time at the shop today. So I figured this is what I this is what we could get done. So this is what we got to work with today. We have an oil pressure gauge from AEM. These are the X series. So they're a lot slimmer, which is nice, but also sucks at the same time. We have their air fuel ratio sensor as well. Now, the reason why I say these suck is because there's no meat for the rubber band on these to be able to grab inside of there. So we are going to have to end up JB welding these inside of here. That's the best option I found for these slimmer gauges to fit in this style of pod. Normally you can just pop off the, Oh my God, dude, I can't get it with one hand. Give me the rubber band. Normally you can just pop off the rubber band on a standard size gauge, wrap this around it, and then just push it in there and it'll keep the gauge in there. With these slimmer ones, it's not really an option. You cannot use these rear portion grabby arm guys either because it doesn't go deep enough and it's just gonna end up sitting in there. So well, the best way I found to do it is add a little bit of JB weld on that rubber band and then JB weld them in. So for sensors, we have their O2 sensor here. These things like to die from AEM. I have killed so many of the, I haven't killed them. They just die within the first like five minutes sometimes. And then you got to order a replacement. I'll link below the replacement and the gauges that we're using. Uh, I've already got our oil pressure gauge or oil pressure sensor in here. So this shouldn't be too bad. That's pretty standard to run gauges. So the O2 harness here is going to run from the gauges to the engine bay. We have the oil pressure sensor harness, which is also going to run from the gauges to the engine bay. This one, which I don't actually, oh no, we are using this one. This is power and ground. So we're gonna end up cutting off this, cutting off this OBD reader guy off of this because we're not using that. Um, so this should be pretty self-explanatory. I run my gauges off of an add a fuse to the fuse box inside of the car. So to start getting through some of this stuff, let's go ahead and get our O2 sensor installed first. And then from there, we'll jump into the car, start running some of these harnesses through the interior into the engine bay and start getting everything set up to work properly. For your O2 sensor, you are gonna have to determine where you're going to put it. Some aftermarket downpipes like ours come equipped with an extra O2 bung right on the top of the downpipe here. Other ones, you may have to weld in a bung. It's not the end of the world if you do. You, can, you should be able to take it to like any local like exhaust shop and they can weld it in for you. It's not too bad. So we'll stick that guy in there. Normally I use an O2 socket to tighten these down, but of course I don't have one here at the shop with me. so. I'm gonna grab the good old wrenchy boy and now we have our O2 sensor installed on our downpipe here. We need to determine where this is going to go. I already know where it's gonna go on Subarus. There's a grommet right behind the AOS. So we'll end up pulling the AOS off the wall when it comes time. Feed this guy back through that grommet. We'll feed our oil pressure sensor wiring through there. We can run that to our oil pressure sensor up front, which we may need to extend the wiring. If we do, it's not the end of the world. I've done it plenty of times, but we have our sensors installed, O2 sensor, oil pressure sensor. We have our power wire here in this other harness. I ended up cutting off the OBD2 port because the wires in here I may be using for something else. So I uh, got that cut off. We have our oil pressure sensor harness here. Okay, so white and brown we don't need, which should be nine and 10, which are at the very end. They are right there, boom. Boom, pin nine, pin 10. So I'm gonna cut the white and brown off on this side because we're not gonna be using them. I'll probably end up cutting this harness shorter, but for in the meantime, just so that way we don't have any extra confusion, we'll go ahead and lop these guys off. So those are the only two wires we're gonna be focusing on. Switch 12 volt, ground. So to start things off in the car, we need to do some fun stuff and that is run some of these gauges where they're going to be going, for, actually all of these gauges where they're going to be going first before we can start plugging anything in, hooking anything up. So let's jump inside of the car. I'll kind of show you the route that I go for wiring and running gauge wire. There's a lot of wires here and I'll probably be taping them up, keeping the harness as tight as I can as we're going through this. Now on every Subaru, every single one, I'm talking like since they started making Imprezas to current day, you're gonna have this little cavity here. So if you go down here and you look up in the footwell up there, right where all those wires are coming out up there, you have a tunnel that goes from the passenger side over to the driver's side. So I'm gonna feed all of our wires that plug into the gauges and need to go to a power and ground source over to that side. And then all the sensor side stuff I'm gonna leave over here, which is gonna be what plugs into the oil pressure sensor and what plugs into the uh, O2 sensor that we just put up there. In all honesty, this is probably gonna be the worst part of installing your gauges. So anything with a white plug is going to feed over from the passenger side to the driver's side.
Look at that. There's the other one. Just so you guys can see where the wires all came out of, it's that little cubby hole right there. That's where they all feed out of. So that little cubby is there on literally every Subaru, I promise you. I've never seen one without it. So now that we've got our harness side of the gauges, or the gauge side of the harness wired through this side, and our sensor side over here, all chilling on the ground over there. Now we can either start plugging everything into the sensor, or we can start at the gauges. I like to start at the gauges, because that's kind of a fixed point, and then from there, we can extend or retract the harnesses on this side any way we need to. So, whoo! I guess let's start tearing apart the interior over there, because we're gonna have to pull out some of those panels. Well, that has fallen into the dash, it's now gone forever, so now we can remove the stock cluster shroud here, which we will not re be reusing this. So uh, here's our new bezel. On the old bezel, there's this little skirt here on the bottom. Uh, go ahead and pop that off. There are a couple little retaining clips. Now we need to start getting our wires up here to where they're gonna be going. I should really buy a new upper bezel for this because that's pretty nasty. So we're gonna go ahead start yeeting off this lower trim panel here so that way we have access to the fuse box and we also have access to everything behind it. So there should be a couple screws down here. Who had this car? Who did this to you? Who hurt you? Somebody hurt you, man. I'm here to like not hurt you. I'm here to help you, okay? If there's anybody here who wants to help you, it's me. Okay, I'm your only friend right now. So work with me here. I'm the only one here to help you, okay? You would've gone to a scrapyard and gotten parted out, so you be nice to me. I actually wanna do a little bit of investigating here to what the f is going on with this random box, which looks like an aftermarket security system, which I'm about to cut the fuck out of this thing. I went through and I pulled out all of the old security system stuff. I wanna say it's like a car toys, cheapo, remote start security system honestly it was not very good and the install was so half-assed wires were just twisted together they didn't properly like use the correct crimps like i'm sorry I'm, i don't mean to be a wiring stickler but i've grown to be a wiring stickler with this kind of stuff so i've got the entire steering column back down here all fixed up for wiring i tessa taped it all back up everything has proper connections on it now same with down here for the immobilizer stuff so now that i've got all the old wiring out of the way that's no longer being used and what not, we can actually start running our gauge wiring. So we have our gauge wiring over there. I'm gonna kind of bring it up the steering column here, route it up to each side of the gauge cluster where it's gonna be, I'm gonna have oil pressure on the left, uh, wide band on the right, so that way we can kind of orientate where our wires are gonna go. We can do our power wires, we're gonna use an add a fuse and tap into that fuse box right there. We're gonna use a fuse um, that is not super important, so it could be like cigarette lighter, windows, radio, that type of thing. So, and then for ground, I mean, you can go off anything steel. There's a ground here, you can go up there, you can go down here. So there's a lot of spots you can do a ground. So for our power wires, we're gonna go ahead and look at the fuse box here. We want one that is not anything of like grave importance. So we've got a, we're missing the 20 amp right here anyways for the mirror cigar. And I happen to have two 20 amps right here. So I guess we'll just use that. So. For the Adafuse, I'm going to put a like a male female style connector on it so that way I can well, I guess I don't need to. I guess I could just wire directly up to it, but I'm not going to. So, I'm going to strip a little bit back off of the Adafuse here. And on that side, we will put a female connector. Plug that right into the 20 amp right there for the radio cigarette, and that'll also be our gauge power source. Now we're gonna do the same thing for a ground. Now for the ground, I think I'm gonna go off of this guy right here, and we'll have it point upwards, and then have our ground wires loop around. This battery could be dead. Yeah, oil pressure, all good. So just to show you guys, we have our power and ground wires coming up underneath the steering column on top of that metal cover guy, I guess it is. We have it grounded right here to the metal cover guy, comes down, gets power from that 15 amp fuse, or that 20 amp fuse for the cigarette lighter and the mirror. And then we got our gauge wires coming up the top. So I'm gonna get all of this stuff kind of reassembled back up on here to clean this side up. Then we can jump over there and start running the gauge wires up into the engine bay. Like I said, we may need to extend the oil pressure. Ah! 
the oil pressure sensor harness, but if so, it's not that big of a deal. So now that we've got the annoying portion done of getting the power and the ground wires all situated under the dash and whatnot, we need to get the sensor wiring into the engine bay. And the way that I do that is through the engine harness grommet behind the AOS. So I'm gonna pull out the AOS here, just kind of slide it out of the way for now. So that way we have access to that grommet down there. We'll cut a slit in it, pull it out, run our wires through, tuck them down into the slit, put the grommet back in, and then we can start hooking up our gauge sensors in here to make sure that our gauges are actually reading and they just don't turn on. I mean, they turn on, they look cool, but we want them to actually work. There we go. All right, move this guy out of the way for now. Let's kind of put it over there. So this is the grommet we're going for. A flat head definitely helps to uh, pull them out if you can get it in there and then just kind of start prying it back, wiggling it a little bit, <sighs> just like that. So now that I can actually see it, let me kind of slit in this. I'm gonna go into the passenger seat. I'm gonna put a flashlight out here to shine in so that way I can see the light. Start to fish these wires up and through. If you can put a flashlight up here, so that way you can have a light source going down. It makes it way easier from the inside. There it is. All right, so there's our wide band, which this one I'm not even gonna pull out that far because the wide band sensor itself is so long. I can just plug it in and tuck that one back in. So I need to get the oil pressure sensor one through here, but that one we are gonna have to extend. I already know we're gonna have to. So let me fish that one up and through also. Yep, it's right there. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out as much slack as I can on the oil pressure sensor one, which is not much. So it gets us to about right there. So I am gonna have to make the extension harness for that guy coming off. Shouldn't be too bad. For the wide band, we are gonna go ahead and push this one back down. We're gonna have to zip tie up all the slack in there, but I don't have enough wire to do what I wanted to do, which was just cut this and then run a new pigtail off of it. So I'm just gonna have to extend this pigtail. I wanted to use another one of these connectors. I just don't have one. So it's so whatever, we'll cut it right here. We'll lose that sheathing. I'll trim back this sheathing here. Uh, we'll make an extension harness, and then from the extension harness, we can go ahead and uh, pin it up and then resheath it. I want to test length on this before I keep DR25ing it. So that guy's gonna go there, plug in. This actually works out pretty well because I have some slack over here on my end, so that way I can push it down into the wheel well so it's not super taut all the time, which will work out in our favor. Go ahead and wire up these two harnesses together here, heat sleeve them, tuck it all down in, and then our oil pressure sensor extension harness should be done. It's just a lot of the time if you go off this front port, if you don't relocate the sensor off the block, you're gonna have to extend this out unless you route your wiring some magical way that I haven't found out yet. So for the most part, you're gonna have to extend them out. So we're several hours in the future at the shop. I ran home, had some stuff to take care of, a couple customer cars, grabbed the JB Weld I have at the house, so that way we can JB Weld our gauges into our gauge cluster here. So where we left off is we got the sensors wired up, we built the extension harnesses. Now we need to zip tie up and clean up the wiring on the passenger side footwell. It's gonna be pretty easy. We're just gonna zip tie them up, tuck them up into the um, like under dash area, just kind of keep, like, keep them out of the way. Once we have that, we'll come over here Actually, before we do that, I think we'll JB weld in our gauges so that way we'll give the JB weld a little bit of time to cure. So let's actually do that first. Now I know it probably seems a little bit silly to have to JB weld these in, but there's just no other way that I have found to be able to get these in properly. And I'm not gonna lie, it kind of sucks to uh, have to plug in the wiring to these, but it's doable. I've done it before. It just it just sucks to do. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of this plastic bond epoxy uh, and we're just gonna spread it around the rubber band on this gauge and then get this gauge in. Now, technically speaking, the gauge itself won't be epoxied in, it'll just be the rubber band, but the rubber band is what holds it in place. I mean, even with the small little rubber band on there, like, it doesn't do anything. 
It just sucks. It just kind of sucks. Like, look, it just falls right out. Mix our epoxy up right here. Now, when we go to put these in, um, we are going to want to kind of keep them in place for probably 20, 30 minutes. So that way it actually has time to cure up. It's just, I have not found, if somebody has a better way of doing the X series gauges in this style pod, please let me know. Air fuel ratio gauge, I'm gonna go ahead and just start loading up some epoxy on here. And... If you don't use the X series gauges, then you don't really have to have this problem. It's only the X series gauges. Take this gauge here and in she goes. Make sure it's straight and level, and then I'm gonna wipe up any squeeze out going around the side of this because there most definitely is some. We got our gauges in, look, they're actually staying in now, so we're gonna let these cure for a little while. Once they've cured, we can transfer the skirt over from the stock one here and get this guy installed. So we'll let that cure up for a little bit. This is just the best way I found to do it. Um, yes, it does make installing the uh, the wires and everything a huge pain in the ass. All right, there we go. Woo! Fuck, dude, that thing did not want to go in. For now, I'm just gonna clip this in because I gotta take this back out in a couple days to swap out this plastic back here, but jeez! We have wipers, zero oil PSI, and we got those. Woo! Heating up. Look at that, we got gauges. My security light's flashing and that makes me a little worrisome, but that's all right. We got check engine lights too. So, gauges work, that's a good sign. We have working and functional gauges. All the wiring that was down here, you just kind of tuck it up against the firewall back there. So on the left, we have oil pressure. On the right, we have AFR. So if we take our key and we put it into accessory mode, look at that, we got gauges. Gauges. These are my favorite ones too, this bezel, because it keeps the gauges out of the way, ah, out of the way of line of sight. I don't know why my air temp sensor down there isn't working, so I'm gonna have to figure that out, but pretty happy with that. Looks good, functional, super happy with that. So now that we got our gauges ran, we are pretty much done with the electronic side of things in this. I'm gonna toss in our competition series swap for the AOS. Somebody did ask me to show that, so I did get that in. So let's throw that in, and then at that point, our AOS is pretty much all hooked up. So swapping your AOS from a street to a cop is super easy. There's two bolts right on the top, they're just Allen keys. If you've never done this before, dude, it's like the easiest conversion to do. They used to sell these with just as comps, but I think EPA stuff, they can't. So you take your conversion piece and you Slide it in to replace where the old one was. Slide in your new bolts. Slide it in, lock it down. Now we are a competition series AOS, it's that easy. So with that, that's all I got for you guys. These are modifications that I legit suggest for ever, any modified car really. Oil pressure gauges and AFR gauges can give you such a good pre-warning if something is about to go wrong. If you see your car leaning out in a pole, you can let out so that way you're not about to do a full send pole where your AFR is like 15 or 16 at watt and then you blow up your car and you wonder why. This will at least give you some advanced warning. Same with oil pressure gauge. It's so nice because the stock gauge in the car is a dummy gauge. When the light comes on, it means you have zero oil pressure in your car, it's too late at that point. With an actual oil pressure gauge, you can see oil pressure start to dip down. And when you see it to start to like dip down, you can at least shut the car off to give the car an opportunity to not die. So, plus it can give you advanced warning for other problems like a clogged um, oil lines or low oil pressure or things like that. So, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'll link all those gauges and that gauge cluster down below for you guys. In the next video, I think we're gonna start on the fuel system or we're gonna finish cutting up the rear of the car to put the rear flares on. Either way, we still got a lot to go on this thing. But with that, that's all I've got for you guys in this video. If you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sight, and whatever color turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.